Welcome back. You're still with us on Startup Street. Now, B Capital is a multi-stage global investment firm with six and a half billion dollars in assets under management. The investment firm focuses on seed to late stage growth investments, which are primarily in the enterprise, financial technology, and healthcare sectors. Founded in 2015, the company focuses on investments primarily in the U.S. and Asia. In fact, it recently announced the close of its Ascend Fund 2 at $250 million. In India, B Capital has invested in companies like Misho, Baiju's, Kartabuk, Fee and Daily Hunt, to name a few. Joining us now to discuss the company's investment strategy is Howard Morgan, the chairman and general partner at B Capital. Howard, thank you so much for joining us on the show today and welcome to India. Uh, let me ask Thank you first, you. you're a global investor. The pandemic gave the startup ecosystem a big boost with everyone turning to technology to resolve a whole host of issues. But investments in the past couple of months have slowed down with global investors like SoftBank and Temasek rolling back on their India investment plans. So what's your take on the current investment environment? What's the kind of interest you're seeing for India? Well, we think India is a great, great marketplace. We also think that the world got a little bit ahead of itself in pricing in 2021. And what we're seeing now is the ability uh, to invest at much better prices. Uh, we are continue, uh, We want to invest in any fund over a long period of time so we get the benefit of lower prices and higher prices. But especially in the startup area, in the ascent area, uh, it takes eight or 10 years for a company to pay out. And so we don't really mind that the economy is slower or faster in any particular year. We just have to invest year in, year out in early, great early stage companies. And we're finding those all over the world and in particular in India. All right. So you did say early stage companies. So um, you primarily invest in them. What's the rationale behind investing in such an early stage? Which are the countries that excite you when it comes to startups? What, what's your investment mantra? Well, the mantra is to find what we call rocket man or rocket woman founders uh, in, in rocket spaces and rocket markets. And uh, the markets in India are really growing dramatically. We see India as where China was maybe eight or 10 years ago with dramatic in increase in the number of internet users, dramatic increase in disposable income. And it is a terrific market for creating business to business and especially in the healthcare area where uh, there's a huge need and demand for health care. That, that goes year in and year out. It doesn't really matter what the economy is like. People want to be healthy. They want to cure diseases if they have them. They want to live longer. All those are great areas. And we think both India and Indonesia in particular uh, are great markets right now for these kind of early stage investments. All right, so Indian, India and Indonesia are on top of your radar there. But let's talk about your Ascent Fund that you lead. It's primarily focused on U.S. and Asia. It's a $250 million fund. So take us through the kind of investments you've already made. Where does India stand versus the other countries? Well, right now we've done uh, three investments, uh, that, two in India that we've announced. One is uh, uh, Nectar.ai. Nectar is a company that does marketing uh, the technologies to try to help companies retain customers. Uh, we've done a, a, a company uh, called um, uh, Mojo Care, which we just announced, which is in the men's health space uh, and he helping digital health to help uh, various uh, things for male health. And in Indonesia, we've done a company called Finku, which is personal finance technology. Uh, in my previous uh, career, I was very successful with a company called Mint, uh, Finku is very much like that, but Indonesia, where there's the personal finances are just coming up. We've also done some we haven't yet announced, one or two in the sustainability area. I noticed that today the foreign minister talked about new investments in sustainability. We think that's also a great area to invest in, and we'll be continuing to do more of that. Uh, and, and also, we think uh, EdTech in itself may be an area. All right, so sustainability and ed tech is an area that you're also eyeing, which actually brings me to the next question. So um, you've already mentioned two of the sectors that you're interested in investing in, but what's currently exciting you about the Indian startup ecosystem in terms of various sectors? Where are you looking to put most of your money? Well, we look to put most of it in, in healthcare and in enterprise software. Uh, the Indian technology teams are creating terrific enterprise SaaS companies uh, and we do that both in our growth funds and we're looking for that type of thing in the early stage funds. Uh, obviously in the US we're finding uh, investments in the same spaces. So FinTech, healthcare, uh, we also think now in the future education 
uh, and uh, and in uh, the sustainability space, mostly in the software and SaaS. So they will be SaaS companies, enterprise SaaS companies, but their products will be focused on in the climate space space in one area, one type of way or another. All right. And your India investments include, like you mentioned, MojoCare, but you've also got PharmEasy, Katabook and the likes. Take us through how your portfolio companies are currently doing. Are you looking at any exits? Well, we, we, we think we have a few companies that could exit uh, when the markets open up. Uh, you know, we have uh, you know, something like PharmEasy, for example, when the, when the markets get better, uh, that's one of those things that could exit. Uh, you know, we uh, we are also in Baijus, uh, we'll, you know, which you just talked about a little bit. Uh, we think there are a lot of those, but I don't think the markets will open up for the next six or nine months. I think it's going to be a while before public exits are, are open again. So we're content to wait. These are great companies and they have enough capital. We, we were very careful over the last six months to make sure that all of our companies had 24 to 36 months worth of capital to sustain them through whatever... Uh, tough times there are in raising later stage capital. At right. the earlier stage, there's still plenty of capital around. Absolutely. So another six to eight months before we can see any, ex any exits. But you're also invest an investor in Baidu. So what do you make of their recent earnings where they reported a loss of over 4,500 crore rupees? So what's your take on that? <laughs> well, that loss was for you know 18 months ago or 15 months ago. So you know you, you really have to look at how they're doing today. And uh, they're they're generating lots of revenues and, and uh, starting to really come up the profitability curve. So I, I think it's it's a terrific company. And uh, you know you the, the problem when you announce earnings and it's so far back and the, the markets you know take a, a strong look at it, you say okay yeah that was that was then. This is now. If you look at it for the last three months, it's a much better story. All right. So if we take a look at it in the last three months, it is a much better story. All right, Howard. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today, and we wish you all the best with your investment plans going forward. Thank you very much. Glad to be on. And with that, it is a wrap on this edition of Startup Street. More news and updates coming up on the other side. Stay tuned.